Hi there, and good morning once again, everyone. And I am in my kitchen for the second time to make something of an apology video for the uh, live video <laughs> that I made within the past 30 minutes or so. Because, as I found out, the sound on that video was absolutely atrocious, and I very much apologize for that. I was not expecting to that. Evidently, there's some problem with the sound on my phone. So, I figured, well, the best thing to do is to uh, do another video much quicker this time in order to uh, pretty much uh, cover what I said last time. Namely, that we made pancakes in the Stargazer cast iron skillet. And I used a little trick, and that is using a potato, a sliced potato, rather than butter or vegetable oil to uh, make the pancake. Um, this... Um, I just sliced a potato in half and used it to uh, coat the uh, surface with starch. This is uh, darkened because it was, of course, you know, kind of crisped by the hot pan, but it still works. Um, all I'm doing here is briskly rubbing the uh, potato over the uh, smooth surface of this cast iron pan, although it doesn't have to be smooth. You know, modern day cast iron will work just fine. Anyway, give it a nice coating of the uh, potato starch. And then from there, I threw in about a quarter, one quarter cup of uh, pancake batter, which is what we're doing right now. All right, uh, the pancake batter is uh, a, a very simple homemade mix. I have a link to it on my website. And... Um, the only real difference between this and your typical pancake batter is that I made it with um, almond milk rather than whole milk, and that's largely because uh, uh, one of my friends is uh, kind of lactose intolerant. So uh, the end, end result was the uh, potato actually turned out pretty darn potato, and <laughs> the pancake actually turned out pretty darn good. And I do believe the, this little trick uh, helped a lot. Now, um, the starch, as I mentioned, coated the um, surface of the pan. Um, other than that, though, we uh, do what we always do when making pancakes, and that is, of course, we wait. The uh, temperature of the stove is set to between uh, low and medium, uh, in that <clears throat> I'm, I'm just maybe... Um, one setting below the medium setting on my electric stovetop here. And of course, we wait until large bubbles form in the surface of the pancake and the outer edges of the pancake be start to become dried out and uh, cooked. At which point then, we can flip it. And then all we do is wait for it to be done. Um, once I flip this, you will see, I hope, what uh, this uh, little uh, potato hack does uh, to pancakes and why I'm definitely recommending you give it a try. That should be happening any moment. Also, as I mentioned, this is the Stargazer cast iron skillet, which is uh, modern made in the USA. It has a wonderful polished uh, glass smooth surface um, and I especially like it for things like this. However, <clears throat> there is absolutely nothing wrong, and I strongly encourage you that if you have a good old lodge uh, cast iron skillet, or even an Asian-made cast iron skillet, please don't hesitate to try this. They will cook just fine, and as I'm hoping we're about to see, there should not be any trouble at all with uh, this thing sticking. Now, if you notice, the pancake is starting to bubble on top, so we are maybe a few seconds at most from flipping it, and likewise, the uh, outer rim of the pancake is becoming more solid. So therefore, take our metal spatula, notice, and give it a flip. Plop. There we go. And as a result, I may actually have undercooked this a little bit, but that's still not really a problem. Uh, nonetheless, though, if you notice, though, it has a nice even coloring on the surface. I'm, um, because I undercooked it a little bit, I will give it one more flip in a couple of minutes. But nonetheless, um, that's the whole point of the potato hack in that if you use butter or uh, vegetable oil 
a lot of times it does not evenly cook the surface of the uh, pancake and you end up with a rim of darker colored, maybe even almost burned um, uh, pancake surface and uh, lighter uneven coloring on the inside. <clears throat> Pardon me. Whereas this particular hack uh, does result in more even coloring. So that should also mean that the pancake is more thoroughly cooked. Um, my guests liked that previous pa batch of pancakes, so I would definitely call this a success, and that is why I am encouraging you to give it a try. As I said, I probably should have waited maybe about 10 seconds or so more before flipping this pancake. That's my fault. Um, <clears throat> it may very well have to do with the fact that I used almond milk in this pancake rather than whole milk. Nonetheless, it is still, uh, I'm still not complaining at all because this thing here flips very easily. And let's just be a little bit more patient at this point. Uh, that, of course, is my fault. And I know that when I do these live cooking videos, people often say that I tend to touch the food and move it around more often than I should instead of just being patient and waiting. <clears throat> What we saw a few seconds ago, in fact, is an example of this. So, that's why I'm going to be a little bit more patient this time. Until the point where we actually do flip this. Um, yeah, interesting consistency on this. And again, I'm thinking this might be because of the almond milk. You know, see these little uh, bubbles here on the surface. Um, I don't believe the starch of the pancake had anything to do with it. A pancake, and I did it again. The starch of the potato. On the other hand, uh, when I rubbed the potato across the surface, I could definitely smell the potato. However, there is absolutely no potato taste in the pancake. And that is why, again, I can only encourage you to give this little hack a try. Yeah, definitely undercooked it once again. All right. Well, then let's be more patient. That's what I get. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> In fact, I think I will do this. I think I will take this out for the moment. And put a little bit more of the starch on the, on the uh, surface. There we go. That also helps, as you can see, to clean off any residue from previous pancakes. Now that we've done that, uh, I'll only drop this on for a few more seconds. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> because, of course, what's most important is that it is cooked on the inside uh, as well as the outside. And I certainly do not want an undercooked pancake. So... Thank you once again for your patience, and I apologize again for the sound of the previous video. Nonetheless, I'm not going to keep you here all morning, I promise. I do have a link to this pancake recipe on my website. You can probably <clears throat> evenly cook pancakes better than I can. I can only say that I am still practicing. Practice makes perfect. But so far, the results of this have not been bad at all. Yeah, there we go. We're definitely getting to the point here where this is uh, just about ready, and I do not want to overcook the pancake. So after just a few more seconds, we will pop this out, and we will be done. All right. And with that... We have got ourselves one more evenly cooked pancake. So, as I said previously, with worse sound, I do hope you give this a try because I like the results. It was easy, as you can see. It was really no cost. I mean, you can use that potato again and again and again. And the result is some pretty darn good pancakes. In fact, I think I will do this. Let's see here. As you can see, it is cooked on the inside as well as the outside. So I am quite happy with how this turned out. Thank you once again, folks, and have a good day.